Let us talk about the methodology. They started with two approaches. There were two distinct approaches. Let us keep discussing what exactly they were talking about and then we will write down the points also. In our DNA, there are two parts, coding part and non-coding part. So there is coding part also and non-coding part also. Coding part is going to code for the proteins which we need after transcription and translation and non-coding part which is the heterochromatin normally does not give us anything. So one approach was that why go for this non-coding part? When it is not coding for anything, why should we be even sequencing it? So this was approach number one. So here, let us say they had two approaches. One was to code or to sequence. Let us write it as sequence. To sequence only the coding part. And this methodology or this approach was termed as expressed sequence tags and abbreviation used was EST expressed sequence tags and what they were planning to do in this was to sequence only that much of DNA part which is actually coding for the proteins. The other approach was to code the complete DNA. This was called the blind approach. So this was to sequence the entire DNA that is even the coding part as well as non-coding part entire DNA and this approach was actually the one which was uh, followed and it was called sequence annotation sequence annotations so original idea with which came from two groups of scientists one to start with only coding part the other said that let us code the entire DNA the coding as well as the non-coding this idea of coding only the or sequencing only the coding part was termed as expressed sequence tags and to sequence the entire DNA was termed as sequence annotation and as we just now said that this was the method or this was the approach which was actually followed. The second important thing which they decided was to extract that DNA, cut it into fragments. So DNA was extracted and it was cut using endonucleases into fragments. And then these fragments were sequenced. So before they were sequence they were cloned so for that for cloning of the fragments host cells were required and the vectors were also required so host cells which were used they were either bacteria or yeast so one prokaryotic and one eukaryotic host cell was used and vectors were two vectors which were initially started with. One was called BAC, bacterial artificial chromosome and YAC, that is yeast artificial chromosome. Yeast artificial chromosome or bacterial artificial chromosome. And when this project was finally executed, it was YAC which was used. So now we know that they started with two approaches. One was finally selected, 
They started with two hosts, one bacterium, one yeast. They started with two vectors, BAC and YAC, and finally YAC was used. Now here, what exactly was done was, these fragments were introduced with the help of these vectors into the host cells. In the host cells, these fragments must have replicated. And then these fragments were sequenced using Sanger's method of sequencing. So, uh, maybe next point we can write here that sequencing was done by Sanger's method. Frederick Sanger's method was the one which was used for sequencing the copied or cloned DNA fragments. So what they did was from the entire genome, they isolated complete DNA, coding as well as non-coding part. It was th that DNA was cut into fragments. Those fragments were cloned in either bacteria or yeast cell using the vectors that is BAC and YAC which were used to introduce this fragment into the host cell. This is basically the rDNA technology which we are talking about. And once those new DNAs were obtained, they were sequenced using Sanger's method. So this is how this entire project was executed. So this is, uh, this is all which is included under methodology. Now let us talk about the salient features of the Human Genome Project. So let us now talk about the salient features. That means what was found out after this project was completed. All the points are written here. We'll take up one by one and discuss what exactly happened. So in the salient features, the first one is the human genome contains 3164 million or 3.1 billion nucleotide bases. This is different from the estimated number. Average gene contains about 3000 bases, but the largest human gene, that is dystrophin gene, has 2.4 million bases. So what they estimate or what they found out was that the average gene has about 3000 bases. This is the gene which has maximum bases in case of human beings. And the number of bases which have been reported are 2.4 million. The gene is dystrophin gene. The total number of genes which were found out by this project was only 30,000. The estimated number was much higher, more than double of this. The function of 50% of the genes is still unknown. And this could be the reason why they originally thought that only the coding part should be sequenced. Maybe this 50% is that part which is having the non-coding one and we don't even know what exactly are they coding for or what they mean. Repeated sequences make a large portion. That means in our genome, there are nucleotide sequences which are repeated at different numbers of times in different individuals. And these are the sequences which become the unique identification of every individual. We will be talking about this when we come to DNA fingerprinting. Less than 2% of the genome codes for the protein. So our genome, we say all the DNA which is present on this one set or 23 chromosomes in case of human beings, only 2% are coding for proteins. The remaining still doesn't code for proteins. Chromosome number one has maximum genes. This is very, very important. Chromosome number one has maximum genes and the number of genes on chromosome number one are 2,968 and the Y chromosome has the minimum number. The, that number is 231. 
So chromosome number one has maximum gene and chromosome Y, that is the sex chromosome, has the least number of genes. At 1.4 million locations, we find SNPs. SNPs are single nucleotide polymorphism. Polymorphism means multiple forms and these multiple forms are due to just one nucleotide difference. Just to understand this, say if we talk of a sequence A, A, T, T, C, C, G, G and so on. The other individual is going to have the same sequence with a difference at only one nucleotide. That means it could be same. T, T, C, C, G, G and same. Rest everything is same. The difference is only at one nucleotide and this could be say T. In the third situation, it could be everything same. T, T, C, C, G, G and same. At the same point, there could be something else. So, this is termed as single nucleotide polymorphism. And such type of differences are seen at 1.4 million locations in our genome. Now, we said that this was a 13 year long project to be completed by 2003. But this project got completed. So, Human Genome Project was completed. In 2006, three years later than the date which they had earlier planned for. So 2006, it was completed. And the reason why it took little longer was chromosome number one. So by 2003, they had completed sequencing all chromosomes except chromosome number one. So chromosome number one was the last to be sequenced and that was completed by 2006. So the project was delayed only by three years and that too for chromosome number one because it has maximum number of genes. So this human genome project has successfully been completed and we have complete information of all the genes, all the chromosomes which are present on our genome. And we can use this information for various purposes. So there was one more point which was uh, hidden behind this project that whatever information is obtained by this project should be used for various purposes. So let us talk about the applications of human genome project now. Let us talk about the applications now. The most important application of human genome project is to diagnose a disease, then treat it. So diagnose a disease and treat. There are many disorders which are related with genes. It could be carcinogenic, it could be resulting into certain metabolic disorders which are gene related. Then we can diagnose what a change has taken place in that gene which has resulted into this disease and how to treat this particular disease. Because of this information of or from Human Genome Project, we are able to treat certain diseases using our DNA technology. So treat diseases using our DNA technology. And this our DNA technology is basically working on the uh, knowledge provided by Human Genome Project. One example is we now know the complete sequence of insulin and because of this insulin we are able to use this insulin and obtain it from E. coli with the help of this rDNA technology. 
This is uh, for human beings. And the similar thing has been done, so this would not come under applications of human genome project, but using the similar kind of information, the genomes of non-human organisms have also been sequenced. Also sequenced. Certain examples, it has been done with bacteria, uh, our drosophila, yeast, and amongst plants, it has also been done for rice. Now, what exactly is the advantage of sequencing the genome of other organisms? We want to use this information in the field of agriculture, in the field of microbes being used for human welfare. So, we field of microbes in human welfare and we can also use all these various uh, microbes for obtaining different products like yeast is being used to obtain various products, bacteria is also used for various products. So this is also basically using them. One more application where these microbes are used is for energy production. So the original thing was about human genome and same information has been used to sequence the genomes of other organisms. So using that information of human genome project, we should be able to treat many diseases and scientists have been successfully doing it for quite some time now. And for other organisms, there are so many other fields and ultimately these fields are going to benefit human race only. So human genome project, which was a mega project, was completed three years uh, more, in three years more than the prescribed time. By 2006, this project was completed and till uh, that time, we had all the information with us partially. After that, we have complete details with us. And we are using that information for our betterment.